Who feel the master was about to be betrayed. You can't betray him until false witnesses arise. You can't betray him until the true witnesses are silent. And then when the true witness is silent, then the false witness sway the court. And the court said, crucify him, and took a thief in the place of the Jesus. And I'm telling you, Wallace is a thief. He stole the house. He stole the affection of the people of his father for himself. He stole a seat that wasn't ordained for him, but he can't remain in it too much longer because time is up. Yeah, he's a liar and a thief and a murderer. How is he a murderer? He killed the spirit of life in the people whom God's messenger had raised to life. He's full of envy and jealousy and hatred of his own father. If he was greater than his father, why the hell did he go out and build up his own temple? Why did he have to come in surreptitiously? Come right on in. He came in like a sneak thief. You know what I'm saying is right. Well, why did you fall for it, brother? You don't know this, maybe. But when Wallace came back and his father was in Mexico, sick. Wallace started moving about the country, solidifying. I know, son, I'm here long. Son, everything gonna be all right, little, little brother. I know you can't understand what we're doing, but what we're doing is so important for the future of the whole nation. Because if the brothers in this room come together, the nation will be built. And if the brothers in this room don't come together, the nation's still gonna be built. That's right, but ain't nothing gonna stop the words of Allah. Now, old Julius, kept waiting for the opportunity. I got FBI files from the Freedom of Information Act. Brothers and sisters, I wish you could read what was going on in our nation, that you attribute to good, clean, sincere Muslims. Most of the Muslims were not liars and thieves and cutthroats. These brothers and sisters believed in the messenger and they tried to live that life. Yeah, there was a few slipping and a few dipping, but they were not the rule, they were the exception. Because the messenger put the fear of God in his followers. It's gonna come out that the FBI agents and even Russia had KGB. Agents of the Russian government, secret police in the nation of Islam. Right up around the messenger were hypocrites and agents of the devil, and the messenger knew it and wrote on it in 1971 saying, how can we make progress with hypocrites on the panel? He had to devise a, 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 a trial that would separate the hypocrites. All right, I'm just about finished. Wallace came to New York City. Came to the FOI. Showed up one Saturday morning, unannounced. Came in Friday night and talked to Captain Yusuf Shah and my secretary. Ain't told me nothing, but they had their plan working. The next morning they called me and said, Brother Minister, Minister Wallace Muhammad is here and he'd like your permission to address the fruit. I said, permission? Of course he can, but let me come down and introduce him. I ran down and was so glad to see him because everybody that loved the messenger loved Wallace D. Muhammad. All of us loved him. 
and I introduced that man in his own tape. I said, this is the one that the messenger wanted to help him in this work. And when I brought him forth, he said, you and me don't have no problems. I didn't know what he meant. But then he started talking, real independent life. And then he said, Master Farad Muhammad was more a savior of white people than he was black people. And the antennas went up. Then he turned and around at me and said, Brother Farrakhan can keep his post as the national representative if he obeys the law. But if he break the law, I'll sit him down. And if 10 million of you don't like it, you'll just have to get used to it. I didn't know where all that was coming from. In the back room, we talked. Wallace moved to Los Angeles, got all the laborers here. He moved into Atlanta, got all the laborers there. Finally, the messenger is back in Chicago, in the hospital, looks like he's getting better. Then he takes a turn, quote unquote, for the worse. And the stuff is flying. They keep asking me, come to Chicago, see the messenger. I had a little cold, but I used it as an excuse. I said, no, I don't want to see the messenger because I got a cold. And I don't want any germs for me to make him any worse. But in my heart, I knew that wasn't my reason. My reason was, I felt they were calling me there to swear allegiance to Wallace, and I wasn't swearing no allegiance to nobody, not as long as my messenger was here. Finally, I wouldn't go on February the 25th. Now, February the 23rd, it comes out in the headlines of the Chicago Defender, Wallace D. Muhammad, to uh, head the nation if anything happens to uh, Messenger or Muhammad. Valora Najib called me and said, do you know what that man did? He put it in the paper. I don't know what's raging out there in Chicago. I'm in New York. February the 25th, I get a call from my son who was standing guard outside the Messenger's room. My son said, Daddy, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad just passed. I said, son, are you sure? He said, yes, sir, daddy. I didn't know what to do. I don't know how you felt, but I was lost. Because the messenger didn't tell me he was going to die. He said, I'm going away for three years. He said, and I'm going away to study, brother. He said, now, don't you change the teaching while I'm gone. I'm telling you just what he said, and I don't care if you don't believe me. It don't make me no difference, because Allah is sufficient as a witness. And I don't play with Allah. Brother, he said to me, now, nah, brother, he said, what I've given you is just a wake-up message. He said, but if you are faithful, when I return, when I return, he said, I will reveal the new teaching through you. I'm telling you just his words to me. Now, brother, when they tell me that he's dead, you figure out what happened in my mind. He said he was going for three years, he's coming back. Well, what does that mean? If he's dead, if he's gone, what can I do? I got confused. And I said, well, man, I can't. Even though he told me that I could sit in the chair as a father over the house in his absence, he said that too. But I can't lie to you. I can't play no games with your life. This ain't about a game. And if I didn't think I knew what the next step was, I couldn't sit in the seat. So on February the 25th, I got on a plane and went to Chicago, called Elijah Muhammad Jr. and told him I was in town, then looked at the TV, and on the TV was Jeremiah Shabazz, Abbas Rasul, and Kareem Hassan saying that Wallace Muhammad is the new leader. 
and Jeremiah Shabazz was the new national representative. I had been wiped out just like that. I'm looking at this. You know why I was wiped out like that, brother? Because they knew what the messenger had said. But do you think they